You are on Bharat Shakti. I am Nitin Gokhale, and with me is uh, Air Vice Marshal Anil Golani, the Director General of uh, Centre for Air Power Studies. And uh, the discussion that uh, we tend to do uh, in uh, various programs is all about Air Force and uh, force projection and what the Air Force tactics are. But today we are going to discuss something different: the uh, production or manufacturing of the advanced medium combat aircraft uh, that the Indian government has now approved after approving the design of the AMCA. We have had uh, a program on this earlier, uh, but uh, now is the next step that has been taken by the government. So, Anil, uh, welcome to the program and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nirin. So, uh, the uh, next half a step has been taken. The government has said the execution model has been approved and it has said the uh, Aeronautical Development Agency will remain the lead, lead. but uh, it, uh, this uh, manufacturing can uh, be uh, in private public partnership, it can be a consortia, it can be uh, only thing is that the uh, bidder should be an Indian company. How do you see this because uh, this has led to uh, some of the uh, you know anticipation uh, among some people that Timelines will be squeezed uh, because the initial prototype flying uh, time was uh, 2035. Uh, can that happen? And uh, if that happens, uh, how uh, important it is for the Indian Air Force? Uh, I think this is a good step by the government uh, to have a public uh, private opening it up to the private industry because uh, you will find that. Uh, it will definitely get uh, you know speeded up and what has happened is with the production of the uh, LCA in India, uh, there are a lot of MSMEs which have got into the act of manufacturing uh, components and other parts and all. So in my opinion, it, it is a good thing to happen because if we were to leave it only to HL then uh, we are already aware of the delays and the timelines that have been affected. Uh, it's a good thing. I, I, the only drawback in my opinion is the decision on the engine which still hasn't been taken, <laughs> which may prove to be a stumbling block uh, as uh, far as this engine is concerned. So, is concerned. Yeah, that's a very important point, but uh, we'll, we'll come to the engine part. We have spoken about it earlier, discussed about it. Uh, but in this case, uh, just to make people understand what it means, the consortia or the joint ventures they have talked about. So, HAL has been the lone uh, aerospace uh, manufacturing uh, company, integrated aerospace manufacturing company in India for years, for decades now. Now, this means that even HAL has to compete uh, perhaps uh, with, uh, say, a better partnership comes up uh, and the lead player becomes a private player and HAL becomes a uh, kind of uh, uh, junior partner in that. Uh, will that also be acceptable to the uh, MOD from whatever press release that they have issued? Uh, how do you see that? I think uh, we already have the Tata Advanced Systems uh, Limited uh, manufacturing with in Airbus. A, with yeah. uh, Airbus. Uh, so, uh, it's a model which is already working in India. Mm. And uh, you've had a number of companies which are making spares, you know, increasing the content of indigenization uh, uh, on the aircraft. And uh, it is good for the HL to finally eventually have some competition because uh, with competition only will they be able to improve uh, their efficiency. Uh, efficiency or functioning. <laughs> so it's a good thing in my opinion. No, that's good. So like you mentioned, you know, uh, over the years, over the past 10-15 years, many MSMEs and smaller companies have become part of the global supply chain for Boeing and Lockheed Martin and HAL uh, all put together. Uh, so, uh, so probably India uh, is at an inflection point uh, in the aerospace sector to have uh, all the components uh, done here or manufactured here. Uh, is that uh, the feeling that you get? Yes, I think, uh, you know, in some respects, uh, it is already being done, like WEM technologies and dynamatic technologies. Mm. They are already making parts, you know, structural, including airframes and all for uh, aerospace companies. And if you see Airbus and all, their production rates go up to, uh, you know, 100 aircraft per month and all. Basically, because of this, they are sourcing from various suppliers uh, across the world. Mm. And uh, I think the uh, indigenous uh, industry as far as aerospace is concerned is growing in uh, in India and this decision will make it grow at a faster pace and that is exactly what we need for the Air Force uh, as of today. Sure. So coming to the engine part like since you mentioned engine. Now uh, we know that there were three uh, competitors or th there are three competitors in the in the race uh, Rolls-Royce, Safran and G. 
there is also a new uh, kind of campaign that has been launched uh, by some social media activists and uh, aviation enthusiasts which says that uh, fund the Kaveri project and you know uh, maybe go for the Kaveri engine instead of going for something else. How um, feasible is that? So, uh, I, I think uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, we need to make uh, one person accountable. When you have fund the uh, Kaveri engine and do it through GTRE or DRDO, uh, I don't see any drastic change in the output of this organization compared to what it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, we have to go in for a partnership with any of these companies, whether it's GE Safran or uh, Rolls Royce, mm -hmm. for the uh, transfer of technology and the manufacturing of the engine for the uh, AMCA platform for it to succeed in the timeline in which we want it to succeed. Correct. And the timelines seem very ambitious because if uh, they are saying the first prototype to fly in six years, obviously uh, some work has gone into it from uh, ADA Correct. and uh, HAL may have done something. Uh, HAL seems to be uh, in the lead because they would have uh, done some preliminary work on the cutting the steel and you know, uh, doing uh, the basics. Uh, but whoever comes in uh, has a huge opportunity because absolutely. AMCA will also then lead to probably a sixth generation. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And how how dire is the need for the Indian Air Force? I think it's, uh, everyone knows it, uh, that uh, uh, what we have is not enough. And uh, also the very fact that in the recent conflict that uh, we've had uh, skirmish with uh, Pakistan, you have seen for yourself what Air Power has managed to achieve. So, though we have the capability, we need to increase the capacity uh, of, uh, you know, aircraft and platforms. And this happened with our threat from our western adversary. When we look at the northern adversary, this the numbers are definitely not going to suffice. So, we need to step on the gas pedal, uh, so as to say. And so, looks like the government has suddenly now realized that it needs to do that. And that's where, therefore, the squeezing of the timeline from the original Correct. one that yeah. we knew yeah. last year. Yeah. Uh, so, it's a good thing. So, AMCA is the future, uh, I suppose, uh, and the Air Force uh, must be pleased yes, that, uh, <laughs> that their uh, performance in Ops Indoor has now uh, got this incentive uh, from correct. the government perhaps. Correct, correct. One final thought, uh, you know, the um, AMCA uh, or, uh, you know, airplane or fighter jet is good, but uh, I think uh, also uh, one has to look at the sensors and the radars and uh, I mean not just sensors but shooters, missiles, integration, all that. How good are we at that now? So, we uh, have come a long way with the experience that we have had with integrating weapons and sensors from platforms across the world. Sure. From the Russians to the, you know, uh, Israelis, the Israelis to the French. <laughs> French and everything. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, in terms of air-to-air -air missiles, uh, we have done the Astra, we are looking at Astra Mark II and uh, Astra Mark III. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, long-range uh, glide weapons is something that the DRDO is uh, doing, we are looking at uh, that as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the standoff uh, weapons also, uh, BrahMos integration is a fantastic example which has proven itself. So, I think uh, we are on the right track, we just need to incentivize the industry in India, the aerospace and the defense industry to produce, make not only for India, but I would say make for the others as well, uh, because India serves uh, as an excellent gateway to export markets in uh, South Asia at least. Sure. And uh, so that is what I think the slogan has been for the government and the, and the policy has been that make in India for the world. Uh, that, that's how. So I think that's a great thought to end our conversation on. So thank you for your thoughts and your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you. Keep watching Bharat Chakti. Uh, we will bring to you such programs and of course send your feedback. And based on your feedback, we can bring you some more programs. For the moment, it's goodbye.